All right, welcome back to another tutorial for play action football. This is a new tabletop cards and dice game for or from the Clark and Addison Gaming Company. Uh, in this video, we're going to cover punting. Now, punting uh, for some games is very complex. For others, it's very simple. In this game, it's pretty simple, uh, not very difficult at all. Um, <clears throat> so let's say Minnesota is stalled out on their first drive and they need to punt the ball. Just a regular punt, um, nothing special. Uh, what you'll do is you'll take your one D10 and you'll look at the punting chart. You can see here there's punting. There's a coffin corner punt, which we'll cover in just a minute. And then there's just sort of your regular punts here. So when we roll, we get a 10 and we cross reference our roll with the punt. So 60 yards is a punt. That's pretty good. Uh, so we'll mark off the 60 yards and now the other team needs to roll a d10 for the return. And the return in this case is a fair catch. So a uh, 60 yard kick, a high boomer stays in the air a long time and uh, the receiving team calls a fair catch. Uh, let's say instead it was a seven. Uh, a seven would be a return of 12 yards plus a d6 roll. So then they would roll a d6, that's a 4, so 12 plus 4 is 16, and it would be a 60-yard kick with a 16-yard return. So that is your basic run-of-the-mill punt. One thing I like to uh, do on the punting is incorporate the breakaway chart. So if you were to roll a 10, uh, that would be a 60-yard kick, and then on the return, if it was a 10, that would be a 30-yard return and it would give you an opportunity to roll on the breakaway chart. Now, if it's a one to four, uh, you only have the 30 yards and that's it. If it's a five to 10, then you have an opportunity for a really big play. We have a 10, that's the biggest play you could have. So it doesn't matter where you are on the field. If he caught that at the goal line, he would take it in for a touchdown. So 70 yards plus the 30 yards, is a touchdown. You, I don't know if you can see it here, but the 10 on the breakaway chart is 70 yards. And then you just simply add that to the original return yardage. And that gives you a punt return for a touchdown. So that's how you can uh, do punt returns for touchdowns. And the last part to talk about here is the coffin corner punt. Now, if you are inside, if you are inside the 50 yard line of your opponent, let's say, um, let's say Minnesota is going this way <clears throat> and they stall out at like the 45 yard line, but they still have 10 yards or eight yards to go. They don't want to risk turning the ball over on downs and then the Broncos having it at the 45. So because you're inside the 50, um, you have an opportunity to do the coffin corner punt. And you can do that from anywhere inside the 50. Sometimes it makes sense uh, with a poor field goal kicker or somebody who just can't kick it very far. So the way you would do that, Minnesota would take their die. You would roll a D10. It's a seven. And then you cross-reference it with the coffin corner column. So that would be a kick. Uh, and basically what you're doing is you're angling the ball out of bounds. And wherever it goes out of bounds is where the receiving team is going to take over. So there's no, uh, there's no return on this punt here. Uh, so the ball will be out of bounds at the 10 yard line, and then the Broncos will take over first and 10 at their own 10. So that's how the coffin corner punt works. Again, that's if you are inside the 50, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense, um, because you're going to you're going to have a lot of touchback opportunities here, right? Um, so what you want to do, and there are some touchback opportunities anyway, but what you want to do is uh, inside the 50, you want to use the coffin corner punt if you don't want to go for it on fourth down. 